Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today I've got a special guest with me and we're going to talk about a wonderful demonstration of the curve of the Earth, the radius, and the shape of the Earth using a Falcon Heavy rocket that was launched from Cape Canaveral on January 15th of this year. So why don't you join me in welcoming Scott from Astronomy Live. Welcome Scott. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So behind me, you can see some collections of telescopes that I've got here, and I've been interested in doing satellite tracking for a long time. Um, that's uh, kind of how I got into the hobby, really, was just being exposed to uh, human spaceflight all through childhood. I grew up on the Space Coast uh, watching the shuttles launch um, and uh, you know, realized pretty early on that I wanted to get into astronomy uh, and uh, seeing Saturn for the first time uh, was kind of changing for me and then going deeper and deeper into it realizing i wanted to get more into um, astronomy with telescopes and then um, seeing you know pictures in magazines of amateur astronomers documenting human spaceflight dating back to the apollo program even uh, and then continuing on through shuttle mir and then now the international space station so i ended up developing software for tracking satellites that uses uh, the brightness of the satellite in the finder camera to be able to detect the coordinates of it and then center it up. So you're just following the bright light in the in the viewfinder, and that's what it locks on, and then that that guides your your telescope. Yeah, which I thought it's was a very elegant a, solution. Thank you. Yeah, it's basically it's basically like doing high speed auto guiding. You know, when you're doing deep space astrophotography, you might do auto guiding where you're locking onto a star and doing some corrections to keep that star centered but it's more of a sedate pace than trying to track something moving, you know, a degree per second through the sky. So uh, it ended up working quite well though. Um, and it, like I said, it, it's basically just locking onto the brightness and then just centering it up based on that. You know, Scott, what I wanted to do with you today and the reason that I brought you over here is that we have a very special set of videos that were done. Now, as a boy of 10 years old, living in Fort Lauderdale, I watched the launch of Apollo 17 from my house, 153 miles south. And one of the very first things that I noticed at that time was how long it took that rocket to clear my horizon. It was the first really clear cut demonstration of the curvature of the earth that I saw other than looking out and seeing what I thought was a little bulge in the water when I looked at ships on the horizon with binoculars. But it was, it was a good 30 seconds, and we have an example of that today. And unlike my one example uh, from 1972, we have the same launch recorded by a number of different people, yourself included. We also had a gentleman over in Gainesville that, that watched the launch, and then we had another one up in Myrtle Beach. And where's Wally, my friend down in Australia, actually synced up all of the video. So you want to take a second and let's have a quick look at that and let's, sure. let's kind of talk about what's going on here. So let's go ahead and have a quick look at this. So we've got a, a split screen here with four different panes on it. Down in the lower left is the official SpaceX video. Just above it, at 14.27 miles from Cape Kennedy, is where you filmed this launch yourself, right? Correct, yep. Now, top right, we see a gentleman by the name of Wide Awake, who appears to have been over in the Gainesville area based on, based on what I saw from his video. And he was 180 kilometers due west of Cape Kennedy. And then the last one is Sowers Bids. And he was in my old stomping ground, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And he also filmed this same launch and they all did it simultaneously we can match up timestamps along the videos. I did it one way by looking at when the booster rockets came off and that's where I lined them all up. I queued them all up. You did them a slight, you did it a slightly different way, didn't you? Yeah, I, I lined them up or, or checked the, the timing of it based on the entry burns turning on and off because you can see the flame come on the booster and then turn off very sharply. We lined them up visually based on very specific things that occurred and you could see occurring during the flight. Watch for the booster separation. Should be coming up here. There you go, see? Right see there. the boosters are coming out? Notice your SpaceX, your footage, Gainesville, 
And if you look very carefully down here, uh, it's very difficult to see, but there's a little knot about right here in that in that contrail. You see that little knot right there? Yep. Now, you see the 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 booster the booster firing. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go. And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and play this. And we're going to have a look at each one in turn. So the, the action is going to be on the left at first. Now, it looks like your video is delayed by maybe a second. Would you say that was fair? Uh, hard to say. Yeah, I'll have to see when we get later in the video here where the booster turns on and off and things like that. Uh, because the because of the curvature of the Earth, I can't quite see the T-tab ignition, the green flash that occurs at the bottom of the engine bells when, it, when they actually light the engines. And that always helps when trying to sync these videos. Um, if, if it's on a pad that's closer to me, sometimes I can see the green flash from the T-tab and you can sync that sometimes with the official video. But you can't really do that here because of the way the, the bottom of the booster is kind of obscured by the curve of the Earth for me. And also in the SpaceX webcast, they didn't really, I don't think they showed close enough to the boosters at the bottom where you could see the green flash pop up real quick, lighting up. That's interesting. So, mm -hmm. all right, so here we are. We're at 31 seconds after the launch, which we can clearly see right here. And you notice that that matches up to the uh, SpaceX down below. But here's the important thing that I want to show. In the upper right is the view from the Gainesville area, and in the lower right is the view from Myrtle Beach. There's something rather unique right here in this upper right image, and that is this pink layer of sky. I want to draw your attention to the fact that there is an orange layer here at the top. Down at the bottom, just above the trees, you see a purplish layer, and in between the two is a pink layer. So why don't you go ahead and explain that to us real briefly and tell me, tell me what that is. Sure, so that is the belt of Venus and that is essentially Earth's shadow uh, causing the dimming of the atmosphere that you're looking at there. You're actually seeing Earth's shadow essentially projected onto the sky. And so that's because of the curvature of the Earth, you can actually see that uh, as the sun is setting. And that's that purplish area where you see the moon in this particular image. Mm -hmm. And then the sky is brightly lit at the top of the image. And in between, you have that twilight area where you have the Raleigh scattering of light, which causes the atmosphere to appear red. That's why twilight is, is red. So what you're seeing is day, twilight, and night. And it's yeah. very, very obvious in this one particular picture that he took. Now, in the image that was taken from Gainesville, you can very clearly see this effect. Now, as I said, right now it's 31 seconds after launch. Now, if we start this again, I want you to pay attention to the upper right screen about a third of the way in the trees there. Watch very carefully and especially at about 34 to 36 seconds after launch. there right there yeah. it's at 39 seconds now if you look right there in the trees you can see the rocket and if i play it a little further now the rocket's coming up see so i did a couple of quick calculations and i i think you did as well 34 seconds for an altitude of 2.69 uh and down range then... Downrange, yeah. 2.69. Man, that's not very far downrange at all. It's it's about 0.118. It's only about 100 meters downrange. It's only about 140 meters downrange, according to Flight Club. It's not very downrange, far downrange at all. At 36, 34, 35, 36 seconds, it's basically still pitched up almost all the way, so it hasn't gone very far downrange. So here's Walter Bisland's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator. Um, link to that will be in the description. But what I've got is the observer height of approximately 10 meters because according to his 
video, he was, a, he was within 25 feet of sea level. The distance is going to be 180 kilometers to Cape Kennedy, and it was 3,000 meters high, three kilometers high, according to the telemetry that I got. I went ahead and I put in standard refraction, and according to this, 923 meters of the rocket should have been, it, it should have been visible 923 meters above the horizon. All right, to put that in perspective, that is 2.767 degrees. That is just over one quarter of a degree. Now, being a fellow astronomer, you know basically the hand rule, Scott. Right. One pinky at arm's length is one degree. So if you hold your pinky out at arm's length, that was off by a quarter of the width of your pinky. Let's back this up just a little bit to where we first see the rocket at about 36 seconds. Well, there's 39. Those are trees. The horizon is somewhere down in here. And then the trees are blocking the first little bit of the horizon, which may account for the fact that we're a quarter of a degree off. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I think those trees easily account for a quarter of a degree, if not more. Yep. Well, let's look at a nice shot over the water. Let's go down to Myrtle Beach. Yeah, yeah I have seen it. And it is fantastic because the camera happens to have the point where it comes into uh, contact with the horizon. As soon as it hits the horizon, it's in frame. And so right. you see that light appear out of just on the horizon out of nowhere. All right. So right now, this is T of T one minute and five seconds. So let's play this real quick and see if we can spot the rocket. Now notice the rocket is visible at from the SpaceX cameras. It's visible from your cameras 14 miles away and it's visible from the camera in Gainesville, 191 kilometers away. It's actually further now because time has gone on, and it's still going east. So let's play this real quick and look for Myrtle Beach. Getting close. There it is. Right there. See it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right down here. And that's at 1 minute and 35 seconds, which is 95 seconds. All right. Now, let's go back. Let's play that just to make sure that we know that that's exactly what we're looking at. You see it there? That's extremely clear. Yep. That is obviously the rocket, and we can clearly see it from that distance. Well, let's figure out what that distance is. All right, so on your screen here, you have the launch profile, and you have things like altitude and downrange uh, versus time. Can you go ahead and walk us through that? So it was 96 seconds before okay. we could see the rocket from Myrtle Beach. So can you give us an idea of where we're, where we're sitting? Sure. So on the top left, we have a graph that graphs altitude by time. So this is how high the rocket is for a moment in time. So if we go to 96 seconds on the on the x axis, it gives us a y axis value of 23.07 thereabouts on the altitude. So about 23 kilometers altitude at 96 seconds. And then if we take this over to the top middle graph, we have a graph that graphs uh, altitude by downrange distance. So now we can take that altitude and we can figure out the downrange distance. So what did I just say there? Uh, was it? Uh, uh, no, 23 kilometers, roughly. 23 kilometers, roughly. So 23 kilometers altitude gets us about 12.3 uh, kilometers downrange. So that's that's approximately how far away from the launch pad we've made it by that, by that altitude and by that time. Uh, so downrange due east in this case uh, from the Cape. All right, so let's go ahead and head over to Google Earth and plot that next to the launch pad here. All right, so I'm sharing my screen right now. Now, the launch pad that this this rocket took off from was the, there are two launch pads right here. These are the old shuttle pads that you say? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, SpaceX leases the southern one right here. So that's where the rocket started from right there. And then it right. went out about 12 kilometers out to about that point. Now, if we draw a line, 
and measure from that point to Myrtle Beach, which is up here in South Carolina, right there. And I'll just zoom in on that so everybody can see it. But that's Myrtle Beach right there. Now he's probably that's down that's that's right in the center of Myrtle Beach. A lot of the people go to the beach a little bit further south right here, but that's really close enough given the overall distance. I used to live out in this area. So that distance is approximately 364 miles, and that is 585 kilometers. So let's go over here to Walter Bislin's Advanced Earth Curve Calculator and put in some data. So the observer height in Myrtle Beach, uh, we're going to give that 5, and that's being really generous. Uh, we're going to take 585 kilometers, 85.5 kilometers, and the target size, let's see, we, we decided we were going to go with 2300, right? Yeah. That's 23,000 meters. Okay. We're going to put in standard refraction. And at that altitude, the rocket should be about 1,294 meters above the horizon. So less than a kilometer above the horizon, which works out to 0 0.127 degrees. So once again, very, very close to what would be predicted on a spherical Earth of radius 39.59 miles. And this is directly out of the Advanced Earth Curve Calculator. You know, the two observations that we had go along with my observation of Apollo 17 as a child. Uh, my observation of Apollo 17 was from approximately 153 miles. Well, somewhere in the order of 210 kilometers. I was down in Fort Lauderdale. And it took a good 40, 40 or more seconds for that rocket to clear the horizon. We have our man in Gainesville, and he got it at 36 seconds. And in Myrtle Beach, it was 60 seconds later at 96 seconds before he could see the rocket. And both of those rocket altitudes were verified with the telemetry, uh, both with my visual stuff and with, your, and with your spreadsheets from the actual telemetry data. So very clearly, we have demonstrated uh, the difference that distance makes when looking at an object that's high in the sky. Both of our values correspond very closely to those of a globe Earth. Bye. 